Right, okay, so um, welcome to part two of this video on uh, the problem with screening. Uh, so, uh, in the fir first video we had got to this point here. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to write out what these things actually are. So the probability that you, um, uh, that you test positive given the fact that you have the disease is equal to, uh, well that is the probability that you're in, so you, we know that you are in the diseased category, this, um, oh dear, the picture's not in the, the screen picture, okay, so uh, the, we know you're in the, uh, in the event of having the disease, uh, and we're asking what is the probability of this, uh, given the fact that you're in here, so we're asking what is the probability of this intersection when you view this event of being diseased as the entire sample space, so this is the probability of D plus intersection T plus divided by the probability of D plus. Well, we know what the probability of D plus is, that's equal to 0 0.001, uh, so we know that this is equal to, from this formula here, 0 0.99, so we can get that the probability of D plus intersection T plus, uh, so the probability of being uh, of having the disease and the probability of uh, and sorry the probability of having the disease and testing positive so the probability of this outcome in its own little set uh, is equal to 0 0.99 times 0 0.001 uh, which is equal to 0 0.000 yes 99 um, okay uh, so that is really the probability of the event that you have this specific outcome. So it's um, this is a very simple probability space. So um, I will move um, this up as much as I can. Uh, right, I want to keep that picture in, pr in um, view. So I'll move it up like that. Um, so um, we can. So each outcome is in a set by itself. So this is the outcome in a set, and we can ascribe a probability to that outc uh, to that to the event of having that specific outcome. And the probability ascribed to that a a specific outcome is 0 0.0099. Uh, or you could say the probability of D plus intersection T plus is equal to that. Uh, so um, we're, we've got this term up here. Okay, and um, basically uh, now we should look at this one here. Uh, the probability of um, well, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, well, actually, firstly, I want to sh I was going to show you, um, show you this proof using the uh, well, show you this um, the solution to this problem using the prob uh, the law of total probability. But I'd like the argument to be followable to anyone who doesn't actually know the law of total probability. So I'm going to firstly do it without the law of total probability, and then show you how you could use the law of total probability. Because indeed, you could have you could have solved this using Bayes' law. You could have said the probability of t plus uh, given d plus is equal to, oh goodness, what is Bayes' law? Um, so we want this over here, so the probability of, oh no, sorry, you could, sorry, solve this with Bayes' law, you could say that we want the probability that you are diseased given the fact that you are have, uh, that, you're, uh, that you test positive, that was the thing we were trying to work out, this thing here, uh, and we could say that this is, uh, we could do this with Bayes' law. Uh, so Bayes' law connects this with the probability that you test positive given that you are disease, uh, that you have the disease. Uh, and um, that, and the thing that you have to multiply by is equal to the probability uh, that you um, have the disease uh, divided by the probability that you test positive. Okay, uh, so if we knew the probability that you have the disease, which we do, uh, that's 0 0.01, and if we knew the probability that you test positive, then we're in business. Um, so now all we need to work out is the probability that you test positive, basically. Um, excuse me, my computer's playing up. Okay, and now all we need to know is the probability that you test positive. Uh, so what is the probability that you test positive? Uh, so... Um, Okay, uh, so we're going to explore this one here to try and work that out. The pro we know the probability that you test negative if you um, if you um, actually are not uh, do not have the disease is zero point nine nine, which has to be equal to the probability of uh, not having the uh, testing positive and not being diseased uh, divided by uh, the probability that you aren't diseased. Uh, so basically, what I'm saying there is if we go back to the picture up here, uh, we want to work out 
uh, this uh, probability that you test positive if you're not diseased, uh, test negative if you're not diseased. So the event that you're not diseased is this here, and I should do a different colour, so let's use this pink pen here. Uh, so the event that you're not diseased is this here, this pink event here. So that's all the out. That's the set of outcomes which um, which uh, satisfy the condition that you are not diseased. And the probability that if you are not diseased, uh, given that you are not diseased, that you test negative is this thing here, where you view this as the entire sample space. Given that this happens, what is the probability that this happens? And it's the probability that that happens in the first place divided by the probability that you're in here. So to normalize it, to standardize it. Okay, um, so we know that the, we know we know what the probability um, we know what the probability that you are not diseased is. Uh, we know that the probability that you are not diseased is equal to zero point nine 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 because it's uh, it's it's and the pro the event that you are not diseased and the event that you are diseased uh, partition the entire sample space. So if this is, has probability 0 0.01, the probability that you aren't diseased has probability that. Okay, uh, so we can put that in there and we can get that 0 0.99 times 0 0.999 is equal to the probability that you aren't uh, test negative and that you don't have the disease. So we have basically now two exact probabilities. We know what the probability of this is and we know what the probability of this is. Uh, so, uh, now what we can do is work out what these two are, uh, because uh, the reason for that is, let me just explain. Um, so I want to draw another picture so I don't have to continue faffing around uh, between pieces of paper. So basically, if we draw a picture of what we have now, uh, we have these three outcomes, that you have the disease, that you test positive, that you have the disease, that you test negative, and that you have the disease, uh, don't have the disease, you test positive, and that you don't have the disease and you test negative. We know that if we consider this an event, the probability of it is 0 0.99 times 0 0.999. So the set containing this has that probability. We know that this one has the probability, what did we get for this one? Uh, 0 0.99 times 0 0.001. We also know that the probability that you are overall diseased, and uh, that you uh, that the probability of this is 0 0.001. Now, uh, therefore, uh, this one union this one makes this entire set. So the probability of this plus the probability of this must equal that. So this is therefore equal to 0 0.001 minus uh, 0 0.99 uh, times 0 0.001. Well, that's easy. Just factor out the 0, 0, 0.01, and we get 0, 0.01, 1 minus 0, 0.99. So we get that it's equal to 0, 0.001 times 0, 0.01, which I'll just leave in that form at the moment. Do the same trick for this, and we can work out the probability of this one down here, uh, which is going to be the probability that you're not diseased is 0, 0.999. Uh, therefore, this is 0, 0.999 minus uh, 0, 0.99 times 0 0.999. So it is equal to 0 0.01 times 0 0.999. Okay, so therefore we have the probability of every single individual outcome put in a set and called an event. Uh, so now we're in bit total business uh, because all we need to do uh, what we our original question was what is the probability that you um, that given that you test positive, that you actually do have the disease, well, we know that that is just the probability that you actually of this, uh, the probability that um, you are that you have the disease, and that you uh, test positive, uh, which we could say is the probability of this specific outcome happening, which is uh, d plus t plus. Sorry, that's a set um, uh, divided by. Uh, divided by, uh, what would we divide it by? Well, we divide it by the probability that you uh, test positive, because we're given that you test positive, which is uh, the probability that you um, have the disease and test positive, plus the probability that you have don't have the disease and test positive. So, uh, basically, if we work all of that out, uh, I want to keep this piece of paper. Um, uh, we'll do it on here. Ignore what's on it. 
Uh, right, uh, we'll do it here. Uh, so, um, if we work that out, the probability that you are, are have the disease, given that you test positive, is equal to, what's the probability of that one, which is 0 0.99 times 0 0.001, divided by the probability of that 0 0.99 times 0 0.001 plus the probability of this which is 0 0.01 times 0 0.999 okay so get the calculator out or does it cancel I don't think it does I can't see how that cancels right okay so put the numbers into the calculator 0 0.99 times 0 0.001 um, and then divide it by at 0 0.99 times uh, 0 0.001 and we will need to put more brackets in here so that times that plus uh, more brackets 0 0.01 times 0 0.999 oh, nine, any one of those okay and hopefully this will give us the correct number and you get that the probability is 0 0.09 so less than 10% chance that you actually have the disease if you are tested positive now the intuition for why that has happened is because uh, the disease is actually so rare uh, the disease only one in a thousand people actually have the disease uh, and for every 100 people that you test the test will go wrong so you have 900 and uh, you have uh, if you have a thousand people one person is going to actually have the disease 999 aren't going to have the disease let's say the one person is diagnosed correctly how many people are, of the people who don't have the disease are actually going to get a positive result far more people are going to actually get a positive result who aren't diseased who actually who are uh, than who are uh, because um, the uh, tiny amount the tiny probability that they actually do get a positive result even though they don't have the disease is outweighed by the fact that there are so much more people they are so much more likely not to have the disease there are so many more people who do have the disease so when the disease is rare and you screen the population for it you will make a lot of people very who don't have the disease worried because they will get a positive result uh, even though they don't actually have the disease and that's something that doctors uh, Doctors see the, um, you know, the test was 99% accurate, that they would, everyone focuses on that. They forget the fact uh, that you have to factor in the fact that uh, the disease is very rare. So uh, even though only 1% of the test will go wrong, uh, because there are so many more people who don't have the disease, you, you're going to get them getting positive results, rather than, um, which will outweigh the fact that uh, the test is um, very accurate. Okay, um, so that is um, the problem with screening. Now I'm just going to show you how we could have... Um, first, I've shown you how we could have applied Bayes' rule uh, to understanding this. I'm going to show how you can apply the law of total probability uh, to solving this. Uh, so, where would you apply, apply the law of total probability? Um, so basically, um, when we had this and we wanted to know the probability that you have a positive test, what we could view that as, we could use the law of total probability, basically. We could say that the uh, probability that you test positive, it's exactly like what I drew in the last video, uh, in the video before the previous video. We have these two sets uh, which form a uh, partition of our total set. The set of not, of having the disease, and the set of not having the disease. And the set of testing positive, the event that you test positive, has a bit in here and a bit in here. So we could write this as being the probability of T plus intersection D plus, uh, plus the probability of T plus intersection D negative. And then we could write that as um, the probability that you, um, that you, what do we have? We have these here. So um, we could write this using the law of total probability as the probability of T plus given D plus times the probability of T plus uh, plus the probability of um, that you uh, t plus uh, given d minus uh, times the probability of, uh, sorry, um, the probability that, no, this isn't right, sorry, scratch this, or is it right? Uh, no, it is wrong, it's wrong, though it is equal to the probability that you test positive 
given that you are in the positive. So the probability of this in this larger one times the probability of that larger one, d plus, that's better, plus the probability of testing positive given that you are disease negative times the probability that you are in disease negative. Right, so um, we have uh, the probability that you test positive given that you are disease positive, that's there. The, prob the probability that you are disease positive, we know. The probability that you are disease negative, we know. Uh, this is equal to the probability that you test positive. We don't know this, the probability that you test positive given that you are D negative, but we do know the probability that you test negative given that you are D negative. And we know that, that, uh, that 1 minus that is equal to the probability that you T positive given that you are D negative. Because uh, the only um, if you test positive, uh, then the complement of that is that you t test negative. This is the probability that you test positive in viewing D negative as the sample space. So uh, one minus that must be the probability that you test uh, that you test negative uh, given that you're in here as well. So remember we are viewing this now as a sample space of its own accord so the probabilities add up to 1 even though you might say look the probability of that plus the probability of that cannot equal 1 because we've got all of this and this but we are viewing this as the entire sample space so uh, the conditional probability of t plus given d negative uh, plus the conditional probability that you are t negative given that you are D negative uh, must equal 1. So we can get this result, this number, from that number over there. So you could have used the law of total probability to simplify the calculation.